Robin Acton, and uh, I'm the head of safety, quality, and environment for Hasgo Rail. So um, we operate, uh, well, we design, build, and, and operate road rail maintenance machines on behalf of Network Rail. Our biggest health risk currently with multi purpose stone blowers are the fact that we have um, a number of safety issues which lead into to the health problems. Um, we have to wear hard hats, we have to wear eye protection, we have to wear dust protection, uh, and we have to wear noise protection. So as a result of that, we have health issues relating to dust, noise, and uh, objects. Our biggest issue was, was that um, many years ago, we'd done a vast amount of noise assessment, which actually said we weren't doing too bad from a safety point of view. Okay, but it was only when one of our guys went for a medical, his driver's medical, and he came back with a reduction um, in his hearing uh, in, uh, capacity, did we think that we've now got a bigger issue here. What's, what's going wrong? So we went back and reviewed what we did then, and we found that although we'd come up with some PPE, i.e. solved the safety issue, um, the PPE was wrong for the task. And uh, the, the guys, when they're out on the machine, have to wear a communication kit, as well as wearing eye protection and headwear. Coupled with dust, as a result of blowing stone into the ground, dust comes up, another health issue, um, we now got a guy that dresses up in a spacesuit. That was totally impractical to do. The MPS guys are probably most affected by this um, because they, they need the communications equipment to provide them with the hearing protection, um, as well as that they need the dust protection so that they don't get uh, problems with their lungs. Um, so it, it will be the multi-purpose stone borough operators who are, are mostly affected. We had a lot to do with Robin. We got our safety team involved uh, and Robin came out and they actually tested us. They put um, test pads on us when we were actually out working to find out what contaminants there were in the stone uh, and to find out the dangers that it was posed to operators outside. The noise is uh, the biggest issue currently um, and that is partly to do with the weather. The weather obviously affects the dust. So at the moment the dust levels are low. Um, in fact, the dust levels are so low that the, the guys aren't actually wearing dust protection. Um, but the noise issue, we have now got three people that have noise-induced hearing loss. So therefore, you know, uh, we need to do something different. So that's a major issue. Let me explain to you the, the equipment we had previously, before we got the new stuff, which consisted of the hard hat, which is compulsory on all network rail sites. We have our safety goggles. Uh, and we have our dust masks, which are uncomfortable, not fit for purpose in some occasions, uh, especially if you have a beard like myself, um, and they are uncomfortable and operators were not wearing them because of the comfort levels that these gave. We started with an individual uh, who had a, the complaint of noise-induced hearing loss brought up via his medical, um, and, but there was a bigger picture to this. Um, and, in, and looking at that bigger picture, we needed the involvement of the staff to help us out and to help us identify what that problem was. It turns out that the noise-induced hearing loss needed to be combined with the dust issue. So we now have two issues brought together. As a result of that, I looked at two industry suppliers, one supplying noise uh, equipment, communication equipment and, and noise attenuation, and another company that provided respiratory equipment. So we brought those two companies together with the guys out in the field where they trialled what they had to offer in terms of their products. And we came up with one solution which actually does, provides all the protection uh, for noise, dust, eye protection, head protection, and also provides other benefits as well in terms of giving us good communication and hands-free. So we've gone from five or six pieces of PPE down to basically one from two companies. So after speaking to Robin and a safety team about this, uh, we've got in a company uh, to come up with a solution of what we could do to make sure that people were wearing what they needed to wear to get the protection they afforded. And we've come up with the blown air system, which is now by far a better thing to use and more comfortable, easier to put on, less preparation, and it can be kept on for the, throughout the shift. Comprises of you have 
your safety helmet with visor built in and a skirt um, which is then attached to a hose which then attaches to my backpack which is filtered air which is blown through the helmet so there is a positive pressure coming out all the time so even if the skirt is not up tight there is still a positive pressure coming out which then stops the dust from getting in this works great with our intercom system which we uh, communicate the inside operator and the outside operator uh, they work fine together as a pair with this new equipment now we've now combined three pieces all into one with the comfort that you need to see you through a shift. It's smart technology because all the time that it's working it senses what's going on around so as the sound comes in it bounces sound back out again so the problem has gone away. Not only that but as a result of giving just one piece of PPE for these guys to wear, it means that it's easier, it's more comfortable, yeah? and the ongoing effect is, is that noise-induced hearing loss should not be a problem with this machine again. So We're coming towards the ends of our trials, but um, the initial reports are is that it's, it's made a big impact. Um, we'll still have a process of monitoring the guys for noise-induced hearing loss, and that will continue for the next two years. One other benefit, was that according to the guys, they say that their general well-being, their work life during the day has, is just so much better. Instead of having all of this wonderful PPE on now, it's just one piece which fits suitably, keeps them cool and keeps them healthy. With the new gear, people are more than happy to wear it and spend as, as long out in the dust as they need to to get the job done. The biggest thing for me is that the guys uh, who are using this equipment on a day-to-day -day basis say so it's just changed their, the way that they work. Not only is it safer, but it's better for their health as well. So, If you were to ask me what advice I could give if you wanted to improve the, the longer term health and well-being of your staff, then I would say speak to your staff. They are your most important asset. And if it's one thing that I've learned since I've been in this position, is that you can't do this job without them. They know everything there is to know about what they have to do and its pitfalls. I have one philosophy, and that philosophy is that everybody has the right to return home in the exact same condition that they left for work in the morning. So if you left being able to play with your kids, you should go home to be able to play with your kids. And that's what drives me forward. So the, the, the well-being, the welfare, the health of your staff to be able to live outside of the working hour is my number one priority. Robin Acton from Harsco was combining the use of three types of personal protective equipment. That's the ideal to do that combination so that you get the air fed hood situation. But it isn't the type of solution that fits every situation. For some people it will be a case of continuing to use face masks. Uh, and it's important to select the right one with the right filter and with the right fit. So actually a company installing face fit testing arrangements can be quite uh, beneficial so that the guys are selecting an appropriate face mask. There's a lot of good information on HSE's website on, on respiratory protective equipment. Terribly important to have a tight, good fitting, comfortable face mask using the right filters for the situation that it will be used in. People have to be clean shaven. If you do have stubble, unshaven, have beards, you're not going to get that tight, comfortable grip. You're going to have a leaky mask, which means you're just going to be exposed to the dust you are trying to avoid. So going through an exercise of face fit testing beneficial because then you can get the right mask for the right situation. There are some companies who do this very well and it, it would to be encouraged to go and learn from each other if they don't know how to set up face fit testing.